guys, just so you're not freaking out, it is October of 2021, and it isn't 2014. Yes, Gamergate is still being discussed, if you can believe it or not. You know the thing that pretty much no one thinks about, never pops in your head. If you're watching this, I imagine Gamergate never pops in your head, ever. Yet, there are certain people, certain charlatans, like Brianna Wu, who not only won't let it go, is pushing it into new heights. You know, we've there's already been a meme for a while, right? Blame Gamergate for everything. I think I even made a video with that exact title because of people keep pushing narratives and saying Gamergate's responsible for this and this and that. I remember Ryan Johnson, you know, saying the, the, the backlash for The Last Jedi was because of Gamergate. And it's just like, this is wild. Now, the reason why it's brought up again, specifically because Brianna Wu, is because she's making a series. There's going to be, a, I guess, a big time series about Gamergate. She took to Twitter and said this. Oh, I didn't expect this to drop today. Cat's out of the bag. I am working with Hollywood on a Gamergate series for TV. Let me share with you the pitch and why this is a series that won't be a train wreck like the Law and Order episode. What happened? These guys, they just they just can't stand women in gaming. What did they do to you? Uh, they leveled up. Stop it. Yes, the Law & Order episode was a train wreck, but I also guarantee this will be a train wreck as well because it's just going to be nothing but not just one pile of trash like the Law & Order episode, and at least the Law & Order episode was still entertaining and fun to meme. I feel like this won't even give us that. It's probably not even going to give us these sweet tropes that Law & Order always likes to hit. It's the same formula each time, and it makes the show kind of entertaining. This is just probably going to be complete garbage with terrible acting and just complete nonsense as a whole. She continues, Gaming is not going to be a feminist melodrama about death threats. It's fiction. It's going to take place in the industry and is going to be about the efforts of an institution to stop an extremist fringe from taking it over and how it fails. Kind of relevant, right? No, it's not relevant at all. What extremist group took over the gaming industry? Who's who's in charge of the developing industry? Who who made The Last of Us Part 2, one of the biggest games? Who made God of War 2018? Let me see. Neil Druckmann and Corey Barlog couldn't be further left. They, they this could not be more progressive. And I don't even have a problem with that. I don't care about that. I'm talking about what are you saying that these extremist groups have taken over? No, nothing's happened. This is just like the whole, the boogeyman, right? This is how cults spring up. This is how like any type of movement gets like inspired because you're sold the lie that the enemy is taking over, right? About the people that are scared about brown people taking over this country and stuff like that. They're sold this thing, like the, the boogeyman. They're going to wipe out your heritage. Ooh, this is the same shit. This is the exact same thing. It's overwhelmingly fictional characters. Some public figures get mentioned, but the characters are journalists, CEOs, developers, and law enforcement. Because the only way to tell the truth about what happened is to make it fiction. <laughs> I feel like Shang Tsung. I feel like, like you know, just clapping. We're like, well done. That was a good, that was really good. I love that line so much. The only way to tell the truth is to make it fiction. Really soak that in. Soak it in. That, I can't even make sense of that. L like, it's almost like even saying that documentaries aren't a thing or something. I don't even know. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's just it's like one of those things you know you know when people say like um like you know the two-party system right you're voting 
and you got to pick one of the choices and then people say it's better than nothing. And then when you ask them, what the hell does that mean? What does better than nothing mean? Do you think the world's going to just cease to exist? Do you think the, the, the country is going to implode? It's going to completely collapse if one of these old dirt bags aren't in charge? Do you hear what you're saying? It doesn't make any sense. But this is this is this is good stuff. This is how you get people to, I don't know, go along with your 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 grift and and, and your, your your horrific agenda. One of my rules in writing this: no stereotypes. We're not going to treat gamers or the industry <laughs> with disrespect. <laughs> the, the the entire premise of GamerGate is disrespecting gamers. Of course, she is bullshitting about that, right? And there's a lot of people that believe to the contrary because of people like her that are spewing, you know, she's feeding them lies. A lot of people, you don't expect them to be a part of this whole thing that took part on YouTube mostly. So they hear it from people that they respect or their friends, and then they don't question it at all. Until every conspiracy theory starts. It's how it's why we're still in the pandemic right now, because instead of listening to people who know what they're talking about, you're listening to the, the political pundits that you love to watch. They're so entertaining and they're always right to you. You know, if they ever say anything wrong, then you're like, ah, oh, I got to go find somebody else to to listen to because I don't like what they said. You know, the echo chambers, the real echo chambers. That's why this is a thing. In fact, it's going to celebrate what I love but also how powerless we all feel in an increasingly radical fringe in the fan base. Where? You're talking about these, these stupid trolls and stuff that don't mean anything that you can just block and ignore? Who are you talking about and what are they doing to affect, what are they doing? What's happening? What's, what's going on with the gaming industry? Is it not still the most popular medium out there? Is it not still producing awesome games by hyper-liberal people and people are still celebrating them? I don't understand. Where is this coming from? So she also continues by saying, Gamergate seems to be really unhappy I'm working with Hollywood to produce a TV show about them. LOL. The irony is, one of our main characters is a Gamergator. We're gonna show someone vulnerable becoming radicalized online. They're not a cartoon character. They fall prey to their worst impulses. <laughs> It's probably going to be the most human portrayal they've ever had in media. Imagine how arrogant you have to be to think that is true. This is going to be the most real, like, this is going to be the realest. No one's ever done it like me before. This is so accurate when it's like the basis of it is an absolute fucking lie in the first place. You're rooting for them to understand how they're being manipulated. You see them making worse and worse choices, and it's horrible to watch. See, in my opinion, this is 100% projection. All of the people, the gaming, the, the devs, the journos, all of them that stuck together, you know, the anti-gamer gators, if you will, I feel like that's them just compiling on more and more BS. They can't backtrack now. They can't do it. So they just keep going deeper and deeper. And then you're just watching them make worse and worse choices like Brianna Wu. Look what she's doing. She's still at it. No one else is talking about this. Everybody else moved on. It, it was trash. It, it's it's disappointing how the gaming industry handled this, but it is what it is. At the end of the day, we all still play games and we're still going to play good games. So who gives a shit? The idea is people will see themselves in the Gamer Gator and realize how they are being manipulated by disinformation. Oh my god. I feel like I got to give Rihanna Wu props. This is so evil. Like, I feel like she knows exactly what she's doing. I don't believe that she's one of the people that have just got bad information that had it really, that doesn't really have any stake in this. And they're just hearing this stuff. Like Ryan Johnson. I don't think Ryan Johnson has watched any videos being like, oh, I wonder what Gamergate is really about. Let me check it. I'm sure he just watched one video of his favorite bread tuber and then he got his information on it and then he never questioned anything ever. I'm assuming that's what's happening. You know, nobody's doing any type of cross-referencing or seeing, is there any, is, is this actually true? This sounds crazy. How could people that play video games be responsible for 
all of these, all of the atrocities in the world, like Brianna Wu was saying, Gamergate created QAnon and the Christchurch shooting and just everything that has happened, right? I'm surprised she hasn't said, oh, Gamergate's responsible for, for 9-11, it's responsible for Waco, it's responsible for the Oklahoma City bombing, or just every atrocity ever with any right-wing Christian extremist and stuff that has existed before Gamergate's a thing, I'm surprised she still didn't find a way to twist it and say like, well, you know, they all played Pac-Man and Tetris and shit, or they played Pong, so it's still technically correct. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I know the vast majority of you that are watching this already know what Gamergate is about. There are so many videos, probably hundreds of videos online. I've made videos. I've broke it down long. I broke it down short. But I thought I would try something just a little bit different. And maybe that somebody that is a confused or they don't really understand. This is the best way that I can break it down. Uh, just off the top of my head. Like, let's just say that you work in a restaurant industry, let's just say like an Olive Garden or something, there's just a bunch of Olive Gardens, you know, just a branch chains of them, right? You're a part of the team. You're you're an employee that's in the higher up, right? You're, you're like management and stuff and owners and you know all these people. You go to conferences together and whatnot, right? Then you find out that one of the employees, one of those same people that are on your level to get a leg up in the industry, to try to climb up the corporate ladder, they're sleeping with people. People that have, you know, wives and stuff, they're just sleeping around just to get a leg up because it happens. People sleep around to gain stuff. It happens in every industry. So let's say it happens in this one. And not only do everybody, all of your peers find out, the customers, the people who consume your product, they find out too. And they're like, wow, what a trash human being. They should probably be fired. But instead of firing this person, you protect them. And not only do you protect them, you trash the customers that say you should probably fire them, right? You call them all these names and say they're terrible people. You cherry pick all of the lunatic customers, you know, the ones that are complaining about their soups too cold and then they riot and scream. It has nothing to do with the employee that is doing all the misconduct and doing all the unethical practices. They're complaining about soup and then you're blaming and saying, oh, look at this guy, look at this customer and this one that's just screaming and acting belligerent and being a complete bigot and racist and everything else. And then saying, it's all of you, it's all of you, right? And then some people, they create a movement or something and call it Olive Gate or something, right? And then all of a sudden Olive Gate is about Oh, all these disgruntled customers, they're all a bunch of disgusting human beings. They're just being terrible. And now they're committing all these other atrocities that have nothing to do with food and, and restaurants. Do you understand where I'm, obviously you understand where I'm going with this. Because that is the basis for Gamergate. Zoe Quinn, sleeping her way up to the top in the gaming industry. People call her out for her misconduct, her unethical practices, all the stuff that's happening. All of you motherfuckers band together and then shit on the demographic, the gamers. Then you're saying they're all racist, they're all this, they're all basement dwellers, they're all sexist, they're all misogynistic. All of these things. Pa cherry picking examples of comments and stuff from these, these unhinged people. And saying it's everybody, it's the entire movement. It's what's responsible for QAnon and all this stuff when there were no politics in it at first. You guys interjected your stuff into it. Just like all of the, 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 the gaming journalist websites, all the Kotaku's and whatnot, started putting all this crap in there that nobody was asking for. The same sentiment where it's like, what's happening? I just wanted to play some fucking video games. Now we're all the way to the point where one of the offenders of this and one of the people who keep pushing it and won't let it die is now saying, I'm making a series that's going to highlight my bullshit fantasy narrative to drive it home and to continuously infect the hearts and minds of casual people who have no idea what's happening. And unfortunately, the casual person is too busy working and supporting their family to look into this stuff. They don't care enough and I don't blame them. It's pretty simple, man. Like, I, I, like, seriously, I would love for, like, videos like this to make it to the top so people can get a fresher perspective on what happened, what Gamergate what actually was, and why it's even called Gamergate in the 
fucking first place. R remember with all the anti-SJW and anti-feminist videos where a lot of people were unfairly saying it's just feminism as a whole? And I've made my, I've done my due diligence to say that it's not just feminism as a whole. We talk about third wave and the radical weird shit that's happening with all the wild hair and the, the obese people that are just, you know, they, they just feel wronged and they just want to screech and bitch. Those, that's the same stuff with the, the radical weirdos that there are, that are on all these, you know, these, these chat boards and, and discord and stuff. Those fringe people don't represent when people are actually trying to change something, when they're actually speaking sense. And you lump everybody in the same group, and you're like, it's so fucking dishonest. It's crazy, man. What a terrible person. And, 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 and I say this all the time, just because you think you're on the right side of history does not give you a pass to be a complete asshole. And I feel like that's the biggest problem we have. These people will not call their own people out because they're on the same team. Happens on any side. I'm not, I am not just saying, oh, it's only progressives. <laughs> Absolutely not, man. I can go hard in the paint on conservatives all day about this stuff. But I'm focusing on Gamergate right now. And this never would have gotten to this height. This never would have happened if Zoe Quinn would have just gotten kicked out of the industry and said, like, what a bad apple. Screw this person. We're going to do better. That's it. It, it would have been done. It would have been done. But we're out here because of a bunch of liars and charlatans. What are you going to do? I guess all we're going to do is shake our heads and continue to laugh. <laughs> but all right, guys, I'm done. I'm done with this. Uh, probably won't mention it again unless there's a hu another huge development or when the series actually drops. And then we'll probably watch it together. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching and uh, take care.